we are continuing in a series that we started last Sunday called Blessed. A series based on the opening portion of our Lord's famous Sermon on the Mount. In particular, we're looking at eight power-packed statements that Jesus makes, statements that we refer to today as the Beatitudes. And last Sunday, we learned that the word Beatitude means supremely blessed. So, as Jesus shares his wisdom in these eight power-packed statements, we, as members of his spiritual family, as members of Christ's church, we are learning how to live, well, not just life, but a life that is supremely blessed. And who doesn't want that, right? So last Sunday we started and we looked at the very first beatitude that Jesus teaches. In Matthew 5, verse 3, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we learned that uh, poor in spirit is referring to kind of a spiritual humility where you depend upon God and not upon yourself. You depend on God's timing, God's wisdom. You depend on God for forgiveness, for eternal life. You you depend on God for everything. As members of God's spiritual family, you are blessed when you depend on him, on God, and not yourself. Today, we're looking at a topic that we are all aware of and something that we fully know about, and it's the fact that life is tough. Right, Life can be painful and hard and difficult, which shouldn't surprise you because ever since Adam and Eve sinned, the whole world has been broken, right? Nothing works perfectly. Your body does not work perfectly. Your marriage does not work perfectly. Uh, The economy does not work perfectly. The weather doesn't work perfectly. Nothing works perfectly. And as a result of that, life can be filled with sorrow and suffering and disappointment. Now, thankfully, thankfully for all of you seated here, for all of you watching online right now, Jesus offers this second beatitude that helps us to rise above those problems and pressures. And Jesus offers this in Matthew 5, verse 4. Let's read this beatitude together. Ready? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now, it seems kind of strange that, you know, you're going to be blessed if you mourn, but that's what Jesus teaches. And we'll look more at that in a little bit. But for right now, I want to share two important truths for you to know. The first truth is that God doesn't expect you to be happy all the time. He just doesn't. Being a Christ follower does not mean that you always have to be smiling, right? There is a lot of pain on this planet, and the Bible says it's okay to grieve that pain. In Ecclesiastes 3, it says there is a time for everything, a time to weep and a time to mourn. So yes, it's okay to grieve when something bad happens to you, as well as when something good doesn't happen to you. It's okay to grieve when a family member or a friend doesn't care about who Jesus is. It's okay to grieve about you losing your job or losing a relationship or losing your health. It's okay to grieve over a sin that you've committed. There are all kinds of reasons over which you can grieve and mourn, and that's okay. God does not expect you to be happy all the time. Second thing, though, you want to know is that grief is healthy. I understand that grief is a very painful and hard emotion, but it is also a healthy emotion, and God loves to use it as a tool to help you in those difficult situations of your life. So instead of you, you know, um, you know, maybe burying your feelings or pretending they don't exist, God wants you to grieve those feelings. Fortunately, many people don't grieve because they never really learned how to grieve the pain and the the difficulties of their life. Maybe as a child, their parents divorced, or maybe they were abused or hurt or whatever, but growing up, they never learned to grieve that pain in a healthy kind of way, and so what they learned instead was just push it down and, you know, just kind of ignore it. But grieving pain and loss is healthy. And it's important because if you don't grieve it, you're going to get stuck there and stay there. And you don't want to do that. You're going to spend the rest of your life reacting to different things based on something that may have happened in some cases years ago and then taking it out on all the people around you. And that's not fair. So, yeah, while bad things that happen to you may or may not necessarily be your choice, grief is a choice. 
and it's a healthy choice. All right, now with that said, in this second beatitude, Jesus says again, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Great, sounds fantastic. How does that work? How does God comfort you when you are dealing with problems or troubles or difficulties in life? Well, one way that God comforts you when you mourn is that God understands you. Yes, he does. It is so reassuring. It is so good to know or to realize that God knows just how you feel, right? He sees the deep, gut-wrenching problems that you face. He hears those deep, heavy sighs that you make. He understands. We heard this just a moment ago from Isaiah 40. Uh, This is from the New Living Translation. I kind of like how it's worded, but it says, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? How can you say God ignores your rights? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. And you can't because he understands everything, right? He understands everything. And I love that passage because it identifies three Uh, key factors about God that you might want to keep in mind, okay? And here they are. He's aware, he cares, and he knows. And I'd like you to say those with me. Would you, let's say those together. He's aware, he cares, and he knows. That's huge, folks, because when you are going through a problem or a difficulty or a a time in your life that is painful and it's troubling to you, it's good to have somebody who's aware of what you're going through, who cares about how you feel, and who knows what it's like. And that's God, right? And, and, And because he's aware and cares and knows, he also provides, and, and the, one of the provisions that God offers is found in Matthew 7, where Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Based on that verse, what God, the, the provision that God offers you when you are in a period of grieving and mourning is this, he hears your prayers. He hears your cries for help. When you are asking, he's going to give. When you are knocking, he's going to answer. When you are seeking, he will help you find. And I realize that when you think about, you know, the God knows everything about your life, I I realize that it's tempting to think, well, why do I even need to bother to ask God and go to him in prayer if he already knows everything anyway? Here's why. Your prayer brings God into the problem. Your prayer brings God's presence and his power and his peace into your situation. So when grieving the troubles of life, remember that one way that God comforts you is just by understanding you, right? He's aware of the groans and the heavy sighs. He cares about those prayers, those cries for help, and especially those cries that, where you don't even know what to say or how to say it. Yeah, and, and he, he knows what you're going through. God understands. Second way by which God comforts you when you mourn is that God also guides you. God guides you. And it's reassuring to know that when you are going through problems or troubles or difficulties that fill your life with darkness, that God guides you by shining the light of his word into that situation. First, second Peter one says, We have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. In those days of pain and trouble that you face, okay, in those moments, it's easy to become discouraged or disoriented or overwhelmed. And and maybe it's because the financial hole that you're in just keeps getting deeper Maybe your health condition just keeps getting worse. Maybe the friendship that you care about keeps falling apart. Whatever the situation, in those times of mourning and grieving, you can always cling to God's word that brings light, the light of perspective and truth into your situation. In uh, 2 Corinthians 1, it says, Paul says, we despaired even of life, but this happened that we might not rely upon ourselves, but on God. On him, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. 
So God's plan is to use that time of difficulty to guide you through that darkness, to lead you into a point where you are trusting him, where you are relying, where you're leaning more on God than on yourself. And that's a big deal. And I realize that when you're facing a problem, it's hard to see around that problem. So God offers another provision for you. Okay, and this other provision for you when you are grieving or mourning is this. He provides promises from his word. Yeah, promises that you can hang on to with all your might during those days of pain and and trouble and difficulty. Promises like Isaiah 41, where God says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So when mourning or grieving a, um, a, you know, a, a problem or a difficulty and it leaves you worried or overwhelmed or panicky, you know, cling to the promises of God's word. That's what they're there for. Promises that can help bring um, meaning and, and purpose and hope into your life until that time when God finally does guide you out of that situation. Third way by which God brings comfort into your life when you are mourning is that he heals you. Yeah, you know, you know, a lot of the problems and troubles and difficulties of life are issues of the heart. And so you hear people say things like, yeah, my heart was broken, right? I, uh, my, my heart has been shattered. I, you know, my heart has been crushed, And the good news is that God provides you with healing. He comforts you by healing your broken heart. Psalm 147, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. When your heart is hurt or wounded, you want somebody who's going to comfort you and encourage you, right? So that's where God offers yet another provision for you when you're going through those periods of grieving and mourning. And it's this, God gives you other people to comfort you. He places other people in your life who are going to walk alongside you, put their hand on your shoulder. They're going to be present for you. People who are going to support you and and share the peace and love of Christ with you. People who are going to care about you. And those people could be family members. They could be friends. They could be members of this church. Uh, In the announcements that Pastor Dave shared, uh, he talked about a group called Stevens Ministers. This this group of highly trained individuals provide one-on-one care for those who are going through grief or uh, or maybe um, divorce or job loss or illness or whatever. They are compassionate listeners and supporters and encouragers. And God can use those, those people to minister to you. And if you're interested in learning more about them, uh, there are going to be a couple of Stephen ministers in the lobby areas you head out. And if you have some questions, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer them. But the point is that God loves to use other people to help you, to care for you, to lift you up in prayer, to walk alongside you, to bless you with love, to help encourage you with hope. And here's the, the really amazing thing. God loves to use you too. He does. Because of what you may have gone through, God can use you and your situation to help bless somebody else who might be going through a difficult time. In 2 Corinthians 1, uh, we heard this just a moment ago, and uh, Ada read it. Uh, God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. God offers healing to your heart so that you can become a conduit, all right, a channel to which you can offer healing to other people who might be facing a painful situation, all right? So be on the lookout, because who knows? Maybe you'll run into somebody, and they need the comfort that only you can give because of what you've experienced, all right? But the bottom line is that just as God has healed and comforted your heart by healing it with the, the help of other people... Please know he likes and loves and wants to use you to do the same for the people around you as well, to use you to help comfort them. All right, fourth way by which God brings comfort to you when you mourn is that God strengthens you. Problems and, 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 and troubles and difficulties can leave you feeling drained, right? They can just wipe you out. The good news, okay, it's comforting to know that when you are feeling like you're running on fumes, God can refill your tank with his strength and his power. 
Again, this is from the the first reading from Isaiah 40. God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. So when your problems are threatening to push you down, God, God, God promises to lift you up and to lift you up with his strength. And the way that he does that is through this final provision that I want to discuss with you, and it's this. God gives you the power of his Holy Spirit. Before Jesus went back into heaven, he promised that he would send a helper, which is the Holy Spirit, who would be your constant companion. The Holy Spirit who would give you strength and and power. Uh, Jesus says it this way in John 15, but when the helper comes whom I will send to you, that's not it, there's his Holy Spirit, there's the passage, John 15, but when the helper comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Now, for many of you, the Holy Spirit moved into your life at your baptism, right? That's when he took up residency within you. And now, because he's there, he's the one who helps, you know, uh, you, he, he helps you control your words that you speak and, and directs the decisions that you make, and he, he empowers you to live out your faith. That's the work of the Holy Spirit who lives within you. And he lives in you because, as it says in 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. And the 